Phenomics has the potential to allow us to discard garbage, basically. So plant breeding is the process um, of selection of the best material. Um, and there's, in every breeding pipeline for most all crops, there's a point at which we don't have very much data or information um, to use to discard things that we know are not going to um, become elite varieties. And I think phenomics really can help with that piece more than anything. So um, it allows us to collect data where we are unable to currently have it very efficiently or accurately. The other way in which it may change crop improvement is um, it could be the next wave in approaches of prediction. So um, we always empirically test new varieties to validate or verify their performance, um, such as you know high yielding lines for a farmer, um, and that's based on data from many environments. But there are approaches that allow us to predict what material to um, will be high yielding. Um, in in the past decade or so, there's been um, a use of what's known as genomic prediction, so building a model based on genomic information about you know, sequence data or mar molecular markers to predict what's going to be good. And I think we can also have a phenomic prediction, and we can even potentially blend the two genomic plus phenomic prediction. And then I don't think we'll ever predict the highest yielding variety, but we can predict you know the 80 or 90 percent of all the material that is not valuable. I think that phenomics helps us uh, develop better crops by allowing us to see how crops respond to climate, environment, to uh, growing condition throughout the growing season. Uh, and it allows us to do that with hundreds and thousands of different genetic varieties all at one time. Old phenomics is, uh, the challenge of old phenomics is that our phenomics the way it was done originally is that it really focuses on individual measurements taken uh, one by one. And so you have a lot of time and effort in collecting these types of data. And consequently, since they're usually data collected by trained personnel, it can be very expensive bits of information that are being collected on plants growing in farmer's fields, perhaps, or plants growing in a greenhouse or in a growth chamber. Phenomics tools, as we think of them today, involve specific kind of measurements. Um, Plant breeding has been doing measuring for quite a long time, but I think the, it's been a gradual shift where measurements were made in the field, but maybe not in a, in a well-designed experimental kind of mode. And so now with the capability of more sensing, uh, that could be sensing that it's um, on wheeled vehicles or even carried by, um, you know, people working in the field to airborne platforms, then you get a whole new range of opportunities. New phenomics is this area of science that really attempts to use remote sensing instrumentation to detect variation in, in, uh, in field environments or in greenhouse environments, variation among plants. And that variation might be related to differences in plant architecture, perhaps, uh, the height of the plant, the color of the grain. It could be a variation in plant water status or nitrogen content. But these new phenomics revolution is really being built upon the science of big data. How do we collect a lot of data on plants growing in their natural environments and use that information to translate or to interpret, to predict uh, variation in the traits that we're interested in. And since it's being collected using remote sensing instruments and being processed in uh, using computer algorithms, oftentimes you collect a much larger set of data uh, in which the data is not as expensive to collect on a data point by table basis. The traditional phenomics uh, that involves the, the sampling is d often destructive. So one of the problems is you can't go back. You can't measure anything on the same plant that uh, throughout the, the whole growing season. Whereas with the non-invasive, if you will, the passive kind of sensing, then you're able to repeat the measurements. And you don't just 
make a measurement on a given plant, but you can make measurements on all the plants in the plot and all the plots in the field. So the funny thing about phenomics, um, it's really being driven in part on the development of new platforms. So for example, the development uh, of ground-based rigs, perhaps uh, tractors with, with, with booms, with sensors mounted, or perhaps uh, UAV um, drone types of platforms that allow you to, to fly cameras or, or remote sensing instrumentation over the field. These new platforms in, in sensor technologies, a, a lot of the sensor technologies are being driven by miniaturization, by producing sensors that are small enough to now be, fl to, to be actually flown on these uh, UAV platforms. So there's this huge new opportunity to collect data in this space using these inexpensive uh, drone platforms. The technology that we're bringing to phenomics now, using remote sensing, using uh, phenomobiles, and using other uh, high throughput, high technology devices, allows us to replace some of those humans uh, with more automated digital technologies, image analysis, and other things, so that you can perhaps, or that you can, so that you can, in fact, quantify the phenomics of an entire field with thousands of varieties in maybe a day's worth of work with a handful of people instead of weeks worth of work with a small army of people.